I just kept thinking, is this true? So I started reviewing papal documents. I started going through St. Thomas Aquinas. And what I found is that not only is it not true, but it's completely and totally countered by what previous popes have said and by what St. Thomas Aquinas says. Dignitas, infinita, and political compromises. Boy, we're going to have a great conversation today. In fact, I saw this yesterday. I, I, the Pope Francis is refusing to speak ex cathedra. Doesn't want to put anything on the line too formally, it seems. Has this been a can of worms? We're going to talk about Dignitas Infinita with Michael Hitchborn from the Lepanto Institute. By the way, my name is Joe McLean. I host a radio program called A Catholic Take, where we look at the world through a Catholic lens. I'd love for you to hang out with us. If you like it, give it a thumbs up and let us know what you think in the comments below. I don't know if you saw this, but yesterday with this release of the document, turns out that uh, Cardinal Fernandez basically said his His Holiness Pope Francis does not want to speak ex cathedra about anything. That kind of leaves a lot of ambiguity, kind of like the document itself. To talk about Dignitas, uh, that we've invited Michael Hitchborn from Lepanto Institute, who has read and reviewed and dived deep into the document. He's got a big newsletter coming out this week. You should sign up to get a hold of it. I have a couple of opinions for sure. Number one, it seems like a lot of gobbledygook type of language, like sort of leaving the door open a lot for whoever wants to mm -hmm. decide to interpret this thing. And then, of course, there's lots of uh, troubling issues that seem to have come up with commentators yesterday. Death penalty, the lack of uh, really identifying sinfulness, the homosexuality not being mentioned, and others. What did you think and find in this document? Anytime I read something or I look at something, I, I, I'll be perfectly frank. I can't stand going on somebody's long, windy word journey. I, I, yeah. I hate wordy documents, yes. and I just... I start to fall asleep when somebody starts telling me a story. Don't tell me a story. Tell me the bottom line. What are you going to tell me? Uh, then explain it to me. Then review what you told me. That's what I want. So I'm always looking for that bottom line. And the very first line of this particular document, Dignitas Infinita, it says, Every human person possesses an infinite dignity, infallibly grounded in his or her being. And... I I remember looking at that line, which it, it's the very first line, and I just kept thinking, is this true? Is mm. this true? And how can I know that it's true? So I started reviewing papal documents. I started going through uh, St. Thomas Aquinas, and what I found is that not only is it not true, but it's completely and totally countered by what previous popes have said and by what St. Thomas Aquinas says. We have to remember human dignity, dignity itself means worthiness. If we're going to be worthy of something, then we have to be given that worth. That worth can be lost. And we know that that worth can be lost eternally because there are people who go to hell. So you can't say that we have an infinite dignity because to say that we have an infinite dignity that comes from the Imago Dei residing in hell means that God is condemning himself and that can't happen. So there's, there's a very serious problem with the foundational element of this document. And when you start to look at it from that perspective, all of the conclusions that it draws regarding the death penalty, regarding poverty, regarding abortion and transgender surgeries and that kind of thing, it all falls apart. You can't build a, a, uh, a new moral paradigm off of this one statement, but that's what, what uh, Cardinal Fernandez attempted to do. You really point out how wide the door is now open to just about anybody's interpretation. And I found it interesting because yesterday, uh, a lot of the headlines, uh, the AP, uh, NBC, CBS, all of like the sort of mainstream news, they all saw this as very, very negative. And then there was others that saw this as sort of a like a, a champion victory, Father Martin, for instance. So it seems like it's any man's decision on how to really, truly interpret this document. Did you you obviously saw it that way as well? Oh, completely, completely. Because uh, once again, Cardinal Fernandez doesn't actually define dignity at any point throughout the entire document. He gives what he calls four different types of dignity, and, and okay, fine, you're gonna give me a type, but what does that mean? So he has ontological dignity, which is this inherent, infinite, 
uh, inalienable dignity that every person has simply because they have the, uh, the image and likeness of God. Then he has moral dignity, which he says yeah, can be lost. Now, I have to point out, the word sin only appears twice in the entire document. But everything that is determined to be a sin that we know as a sin, abortion and transgender surgery, etc., he identifies it now as a violation of human dignity. So he's changing the nature of sin, our understanding of sin, the problem of sin, and it's no longer an offense to God, which is what sin is, but now it's just a violation of human dignity. This has no meaning. There is no basis for this understanding of human dignity in any element of Catholic thought. To respect human dignity, the Declaration also condemns unjust discrimination, aggression, and violence directed toward individuals based on sexual orientation going on. It should be denounced, this is quoting, it should be denounced as contrary to human dignity, the fact that in some places, not a few people are imprisoned, tortured, and even deprived of the good of life solely because of their sexual orientation, close quote. So... Again, it's one of these things like uh, he's basically throwing some digs at those African countries that pass laws that say we're not going to accept any sodomy here. And remember, we all remember his trip to Africa and how the uh, the mm -hmm. African nations were uncomfortable with the Pope's outward statements condemning the, the anti-sodomy laws. And, of course, we all know the Fiduzzi Stupacan's response now where the African bishops had to lead the way to say we're not we're not putting up with this here. And yet they've. They're seemingly doubling down. They not only do they not mention homosexuality in particular in this document, but they seem to be saying, hey, you got to back off, you know, having issues with this from a public policy standpoint in your country. Is that the proper interpretation? Well, so the document does mention sexual orientation, and it, it it's, that becomes the new buzzword for homosexual activities. And, and there's a bit of a straw man going on here because what, what uh, Cardinal Fernandez says is that these countries that are put, imposing these, uh, these laws, these discriminatory laws, uh, can imprison, torture, and even execute people for having a sexual orientation. That's not true. It's the sexual activity that is causing people to be imprisoned or executed, not the, um, the orientation. An individual who simply says, gosh, I kind of feel this way, is not going to be thrown in prison, is not going to be tortured, and is not going to be executed. So it's a straw man. But with regard to the question of whether it is against or opposed to human dignity, for somebody to be executed, I want to point this out. St. Thomas Aquinas says this in um, the Secunde Secunde, quote, by sinning, man departs from the order of reason and consequently falls away from the dignity of his manhood insofar as he is naturally free and exists for himself and he falls into the slavish state of, of the beasts. And he does so by being disposed of according as, uh, by being disposed of according as he is useful to others. And then he, he cites the Psalms. And then he goes on, he says, Hence, although it be evil itself to kill a man so long as he preserve his dignity, yet may be good to kill a man who has sinned even as it is to kill a beast. For a bad man is worse than a beast and is more harmful as the philosopher states. So this question about execution, the death penalty being opposed to human dignity, Thomas Aquinas completely disagrees. Is there anything good we can say about the document? It seems like there were strong statements against abortion. It seems like there were strong statements against transgender uh, you know, surgeries and therapies and treatments like that. What about IVF? Anything good out of the document that you thought was, was well said? Well, look, I'll, I'll say this. I think that it's fine that the document reaffirms certain elements of Catholic moral thought, but the fact that it is built upon a false premise that man has infinite dignity, which Thomas Aquinas and previous popes have pointed out, only Christ and Our Lady have infinite dignity. Christ, by virtue of his uh, having a divine person, he is a divine person, and Our Lady by virtue of the fact that she is the Mother of God. Those two things give those two people, persons, uh, infinite dignity. None of us 
possesses infinite dignity. And mm -hmm. when you build an entire moral paradigm on this notion that there is infinite dignity, uh, you you wind up destroying uh, the the very moral fiber of the, of the teaching itself. So if you point out that, <laughs> well, this premise is false, and therefore uh, people who commit abortions or the the act of abortion is no longer a um, an offense to the infinite dignity of a human person, well, now you've destroyed the moral argument. So it's a, it's a serious problem. There really isn't anything that the document uh, puts forth as a positive statement. In other words, it's there's no, therefore you must, as, a, mm -hmm. as opposed to like fiducia supplicans, which says, well, now you've got to open the door for this kind of blessing. There's no therefore in this document. So I don't think it's going to have any kind of pushback, except um, it's going to be received with kind of a yawn and a, 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 well, a tilt of the head, and that's about it. My question is, what future document is going to be built on it? And that's the problem. Did you like that video? It's okay. You can admit it. It's perfectly fine. Hey, we cover the big stories of our day from inside the church to outside the church to all points in between. And we do it from a Catholic perspective. It's called a Catholic take. It's a radio program Monday through Friday. We live stream it right here on this channel, by the way. So make sure to subscribe, like, and share. We would be very grateful to you. And don't forget, you're going to want to watch this video right here because you don't want to miss anything.